Hi friends, the modern market offers us a huge number of various boards of pulse voltage and current regulators which are cheap and have high efficiency. They can be used to build homemade chargers, but they aren't always at hand and sometimes it makes no sense to buy them at all. It is easier to assemble the charger yourself. Today we will consider three simple charger circuits, I repeat, simple circuits which can be used to charge a variety of batteries. The first two circuits work in linear mode. Someone will say, come on, who will collect them? Linear mode primarily means intense heating, but the charger is stationary, not portable, so efficiency isn't a decisive factor. The only drawback of the presented circuit is that they need large cooling radiators, and the rest is all good. They have always been in use and will always stay in use. They have undoubted advantages, simplicity and high repeatability, low cost. In addition, they don't interfere with the AC mains as in the case of the pulse devices. Let's look at the first circuit. I found it in datasheet of the LM317 microcircuit. There are only four components. A pair of resistors set the end of charge voltage and the output voltage of the circuit as a whole and also the current sensor, which sets the maximum output current of the circuit. If you need a universal charger, the circuit will look like this. Rotation of the trimmer can set any desired output voltage from 3 to 30 volts. In theory, it is possible up to 37 volts, but in this case you need to apply 40 volts to the input, which I don't recommend. The maximum output current depends on the resistance of the current sensor and cannot be higher than 1.5 amperes if the chip is original. Mine is non-original, so the maximum current is less. The output current of the circuit can be calculated by this formula, where 1.25 is the voltage of the reference source of the LM317 chips. R is the resistance of the current sensor. To obtain a maximum current of 1.5 ampere, the resistance of the resistor should be 0.8 ohm, but on the diagram is 0.2 ohm. The fact is that even without a resistor, the maximum current at the output of the chip will be limited to the specified value. The resistor is more for insurance and its resistance is reduced to minimize losses. The greater the resistance, the more the voltage will drop on it, and this leads to a strong heating of the resistor. If you need a smaller value of the output current, the calculation is already made by the previously specified formula. The chip must be installed on a massive radiator. Unstabilized voltage up to 30 to 35 volts is fed to the input. It's slightly less than the maximum allowable input voltage for the LM317 chip. Remember that the LM317 chip can dissipate a maximum of 15 to 20 watts of power. Be sure to consider this. You also need to consider that the maximum output voltage will be 2 to 3 volts less than the input. Charging will be with stable voltage and the current can't be greater than the preset limit. The circuit can be used to charge even lithium-ion batteries. Nothing bad will happen if a short circuit occurs. Simply will be the limitation of the current. If the cooling of the chip is good and the difference between the input and output voltage is small, the circuit in this mode can work for an infinitely long time. All assembled on a small PCB. You can download it and also boards for the two next circuits with the project archive by the link in the description. If home technologies for creating printed circuit boards are no longer satisfying or you need to make a large number of boards, it's much more profitable to order them at the factory. GLC is one of the leading manufacturers of printed circuit boards of any complexity, shape and size. Exquisite quality at minimal cost. Only $2 for 10 boards with dimensions of 10 by 10 cm. Your order will be ready in a day from the moment it's received. A link to the video with the full production process of the boards and to the GLC website can be found in the description. The second circuit is a powerful stabilized power supply with a maximum output current of up to 10 amperes which based on the first option. It differs from the first circuit with an additional power transistor of the PNP structure. In my case, the composite transistor TIP147 is used. 
Although it can be ordinary, the maximum output current depends on the resistance of the current sensor and the collector current of the transistor. In my case, current is limited to 7 amperes. The output voltage is regulated in the range from 3 to 30 volts, which will allow you to charge almost any battery. Adjustment of the output voltage is with the trimmer. This option is great for charging car batteries. The maximum charge current with such components value is 10 amperes. The output current of the circuit can be calculated by the same formula as in the case of the first circuit. I think it's clear that the output current should not exceed the permissible collector current of the transistor. In my case, the transistor is 10 amperes, so the maximum current made a little less for safety. You must take into account a very important point if you are building linear power supplies. I have repeatedly pointed out this, but I will say again. In linear circuit, if the output is short-circuited or you set low voltage and high current, the power cell will work in a very hard mode. For example, the supply voltage is 20 volts, the output is 5, and the output current is 10 amperes. On the transistor will be dissipated enormous power and all this will go to heat. In this case, the difference between the input and output voltage is 15 volts. Multiply it by the current at the output and get the value of power in watts, which are dissipated by the transistor. In this case, it is 150 watts. The transistor case will not be able to dissipate as much, and the transistor itself can't dissipate more than 125 watts. To solve this problem, as well as to increase the overall load capacity of the power supply, several parallel connected transistors with current leveling resistors are used. Always consider this when designing linear power supply circuits and optimize the operation of the transistor. For example, if the device will be used to charge car batteries, then it is necessary to apply a voltage of 18 to 20 volts to the input. Now let's examine the principle of the circuit. At low current values, the power transistor is closed. As the output current increases, the voltage drop across the resistor becomes sufficient. The transistor starts to open and all current flows through the open junction of the transistor. I put 2 watt input resistor, but you can take less. Naturally, due to the linear mode of operation, the circuit will heat up strongly. The power transistor and current sensors are especially hot. The transistor and the chip LM317 are screwed onto a common massive aluminum heatsink. It isn't necessary to isolate the substrate from the heatsink, since they are common. It is very desirable and even obligatory to use an additional fan if the circuit is used at high current. To charge the batteries, you need to preset the end voltage value by rotating the trimmer, and that's all. The maximum charge current is limited to 10 amperes, and as the battery charges, the current will fall. The circuit isn't afraid of short circuits. In that event, the current will be limited. As in the case of the first circuit, if there is good cooling, the device will be able to tolerate such a mode of operation for a long time. I experimented with this circuit for quite a long time, so don't pay attention to the additional trimmer that I have on the board. Now, well, a few tests. Test number one. We check the voltage stabilization function. A constant voltage is applied to the input of the unit. At the output I set 6 volts. Will the output voltage change when the input voltage changes? As you can see, stabilization works. Test number 2. Will the output voltage keep stable under load? The first multimeter will show the output current, the second the voltage. At idle, the voltage at the output of the circuit is 10 volts. We connect the load. At an output current of about 4 amperes, the voltage drawdown is insignificant and this is due to losses on the wires and on the shunt of the ammeter. Now the last test in short circuit mode. In this experiment, the input power is supplied from the battery and there are no current limiting nodes. All hope is for LM317. If the limitation doesn't work, the transistor will explode with smoke and pop. We try. The circuit passes the toughest test. During short circuits, the current was limited to 7 amperes, so everything is fine. 
The third circuit is automatic battery shutdown system when fully charged. That is, it isn't exactly a charger. On this topic, there will be a separate video where using this circuit will be built a full-fledged charger. The initial circuit was subject to some changes and the board was finalized during the tests. The final version of the board can be downloaded along with the project archive by the link in the description. As you can see, circuit is very simple and contains only one transistor, an electromagnetic relay and a few other things. I also have a diet bridge at the input and simple protection against polarity reversal. These nodes aren't drawn on the diagram. A constant voltage from a charger or any other power source is supplied to the input of the circuit. Here it's important to note that the charge current shouldn't exceed the allowable current through the relay contacts and the fuse actuation current. In my case, circuit is for 8 amperes. How does it work? When power is applied to the input, the battery is charged. The circuit has a voltage divider with which the voltage is monitored directly on the battery. As the charge, the voltage on the battery will increase. As soon as it becomes equal to the value presets by the trimming resistor, the Zener diode triggers, sending a signal to the base of the low power transistor, and it also triggers. Since the coil of the electromagnetic relay is connected to the collector circuit of the transistor, relay also works, the contacts open, and the further supply of power to the battery stops. At the same time, the second LED lights up, informing you that charging is over. There is another LED in the circuit. It is constantly on. This is an indicator of the presence of voltage on the board. As said earlier, the divider monitors the voltage directly on the battery. Therefore, if the battery being connected to the charger is discharged to a certain value, the circuit will automatically trigger and the charging process will restart. Since the divider is connected directly to the battery, it will discharge it, but the discharge current is so scanty that it can be ignored. To set up the circuit, a high-capacity capacitor is connected to its output. It stimulates a quick-charge battery. The voltage of the capacitor is 25 to 35 volts. In my case, the battery is simulated by using 5 ionisters connected in series. Usually, they need a balancing system, but for this experience, it isn't critical. First, we connect the so-called battery to the output of the circuit, observing the polarity. At the end of the charge, first disconnect the charger from the mains, then the battery. Otherwise, the relay will falsely operate. Nothing bad will happen, but the sound is unpleasant. Next, take any regulated power supply. In my case, it is a laboratory unit. We preset on it the voltage to which the battery will charge and connect the unit to the input of the circuit. Slowly rotate the trimmer until the red indicator is working. After this, we make one full turn of the trimmer in the opposite direction, since the circuit has some hysteresis. And now let's check. The voltage on the ionisters will indicate the multimeter. When the threshold is reached, the circuit will turn off the power. As you can see, everything works. Now let's discharge the ionisters with a powerful lamp, imitating the self-discharge of the battery. If the voltage drops, the circuit will again work and recharge the battery. All is perfect. In the following videos, I will show you how to make a full-fledged charger from the simple circuit with current limiting function and protection against polarity reversal. All the necessary links are in the description, including a link to my Instagram, where I regularly upload photos of new projects. If you have questions related to electronics, ask them in our group. Now, I say goodbye until new meetings. With you, as always, was Kassian TV.